Yeah, so maybe you heard about what happened this summer, no? Okay, let me tell you. Let me, how you say, fill you in. The bees, my people, as it were. Okay, so we're not actually people, but I'm going to speak in terms you can understand. So I'm saying people, so maybe you can, you know, relate. I'm not going to buzz. There will be no cute little yellow and black striped suit, no antenna to make it easier for you to distance yourself from me, to make it possible for you to say, well, hey, she's only a bee. What you see here is, if you will, the essence of the bees. I am the essence, me. I am the voice of my people, and my people are the bees. So, August 2015. Here's the situation. Pesticides, pollution, a dwindling source of basic flower nectar citywide. You don't believe me? Check out this Harvard study. Published in the June 2015 edition of the Bulletin of Insectology. Insectology, nice word, right? It says here that Harvard has found irrefutable proof that, and I quote, sublethal exposure to neonicotinoids is likely the main culprit for the occurrence of colony collapse disorder. And by colony, they mean bees. My bees, which is to say, my colony. CCD. That's right, it's so common it has an acronym. CCD caused by neonicotinoids. I say the word alone, even I die a little. Neonicotinoids. Isn't it nice to know the exact name of the thing that is exactly killing you? So, this summer, starving to death as we were, what with the neonicotinoids covering our food and smoking us out of our hives, and as if that wasn't bad enough, the drought killing off whatever potentially fresh food supplies we had, we went a little nomad. We went a little stark, raving nomad. We started with the bicycle. It spoke to us. The handlebars, to be exact. We were 30,000 strong still, and by God, we were going to colonize that delivery bike. We formed a human hive, if you will, collecting on every surface of those handlebars, chained though they were to a no standing any time sign, until we became one humming, palpitating mass of handlebar-shaped bees. The symbolism was heart-crushing. A food delivery bike. Another symbolic stop along the way, a traffic light. We crowded into the red, an awesome force producing an almost human cry for stop if I ever heard one. It was beautiful. But then we began losing our numbers. 25,000, then 20,000. Down to 15,000 we were, nonetheless, determined to go forward. News crews followed us as we journeyed, one block at a time. They showed up to cover what they quickly realized was no mere colony migration, but a massive, soul-sucking suicide mission. Because it was obvious we were dying. It was clear that we, a single, thriving, gorgeous, honey-making, nectar-loving colony that once, not too long ago, had stood almost 50,000 strong, we were going down. And if we were going down, we were taking a piece of the world down with us. We kept moving, mad with hunger and rage, until we were only 10,000, then 5,000, then 50. By then, we weren't news anymore. No giant mass of bees attaching themselves to human objects? Well then, they said, forget about it. We had their attention when our numbers were large, our targets brilliantly symbolic. But no one hears you buzz when you're on the way out, when all you're swarming is a cardboard coffee cup. No one listens or notices that last writhing bit of bee fluff crawling for her life towards that one last rose of summer. The hive is broken now. I am the last bee standing, the last of my colony, here to testify, to make this last plea for my people. How many more of us are out there starving to death? Starving to death in Midtown, in LA, starving across the ocean. How much longer must we go on this way? When is someone going to join our fight? Because we're freaking bees, man. There's only so much we can do alone. Okay, sure, Greenpeace cares. They have the idea. They're doing what they can. But are they enough? What does it take to stop the pesticides and the pollution that are destroying us? Don't let my death be in vain. Save the bees. Save my people. Now.